next speaker spoke last year at the, uh, you know, we have a digital social uh, program on uh, Plenary 2. And uh, I was so blown away by his talk, as many people, that we wanted to have him back this year. I think he's one of the most charismatic speakers I've uh, ever heard. And uh, also a great, great expert in social media marketing. So please help me welcome and if you if you're if you're not <laughs> if you're not awake, I think you'll be awake in a bit. Uh, please help me welcome Ramon De Leon, who is um, in social media marketing at Domino's Pizza. Ramon. <laughs> hey, what's up, everybody? It's DPZ Ramon right here. Just ran into Clint. You know what? He's having a great slice of pizza. Plus, he's a member of the Fury. Clint, show me your back, man. Show yeah, it. Look at that. Bam! <laughs> audio here in the US when you need 911 you need the police fire ambulance that's who you call but when there's a blizzard in Chicago and 911 needs food now you know who they call Je <laughs> Ramon De Leon, I am the marketing mind behind six Domino's Pizza stores in Chicago! Oh, beyond excited to be here. Let's queue up that first slide. I got control of it or you do. Let me tell you, Loic, I want to thank you very much for the opportunity to come back and share what we do. What excites me the most is the opportunity to talk about 
what we do with the tools of social media and how we connect, how we engage our customers and how our thoughts and our tweets just get into their hearts. So let's do this. Now, I will tell you, world, you need to be prepared. You need to be prepared to create content. You need to be prepared to capture that content and most definitely share it. So when we shared that video, people were talking about the day after the blizzard, who was open? And they said Domino's Pizza was open. Two months after that blizzard, the trolley tour is doing its thing and they're passing our store saying, who was open? Domino's Pizza was open. Now that stuff is really cool. And the thing you have to realize is that with all your content, the world and people, people watch, people listen, people share. People actually also record life. If you've never seen a dog with a camera, hang out in Chicago on St. Patrick's Day. But I tell you what, you don't have to go very far to see that. Because if you were at that party a couple of nights ago, three different people had go cams on there. So I'm telling you, technology has become wearable. Now while at dinner, thank you very much, Ekaterina, for this photo. Who else runs around with about a dozen gadgets in their pockets? Why? Because I myself need to be prepared to capture, share, and record content. While at the party here in the web a couple of days ago, I'm sharing a smile with my awesome friend from Ambassador in Vienna, Austria. And I tell her, I said, Sabine, take a look at this tweet. About a month ago, we messed up a customer's pizza, and I told her, next time you have a pizza need, tweet me. Well, it's 1.15 a.m. in Paris. You need to understand that when you let customers get to know the face behind the logo, where you're at doesn't matter because they're looking at their mobile device, and to them, that's where you're at. So what do I do? So she says, hey, can I DM the offer, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? I said, absolutely. Unfortunately, it took about an hour to make it happen, but look at her tweet. She said, hey, I just got a call from Domino's. Now, what I want to share with you is things such as a video. What can the video do that a video, that a tweet can't do? Live from the dance floor, we did this. So no matter where I'm at in the world, my goal is to just make people smile. So I uploaded that at the event, tweeted, tweeted that out to her, and then I asked her in a tweet, I said, how did we make you feel? It made her feel awesome. Unfortunately, she needed the pizza. She wasn't in the mood to cook because she had to put her dog down. And so in the tweet, you know, we, we expressed our condolences to her. My goal is to inspire you. If you can breathe, you can believe. Now, we had a customer of ours running the 12th Chicago Marathon. That alone in itself is a feat. 8.12 in the morning, he tweets, too bad I lost one of my earbuds. So what would we do? What any other brand would do? Absolutely. We got a sign we stood out in the middle of the marathon. We went out and we bought him new headphones. So as he came running past the store, we said, Jeff, the president of Social Media Club Chicago, we got your back. How do you think we made him feel? We made him feel so great that that photo, he used it as his Facebook profile pic. How do you make people feel? Now, we're talking about the Internet of Things. You know, the, the Internet has many explanations. But when you think of graffiti, what inspires people to do graffiti? So while out and about in Paris, I was shocked to see the word internet used as, as graffiti. But to a certain extent, I think that that has to do with maybe the, the passion. Is it something that we can't live, you know, live without? It may or it may not be. In 2004, at Northwestern University, the first day that Facebook hit our area code, we had a very simple blog called NU Dominoes. And when Facebook hit, I knew that we were onto something. I knew that that was a tool for continual engagement.
And my goal was to get to know the customers after they left school. So what did we do? Well, aside from me not being able to go to school in 2005, because that just wasn't going to happen, what we did is we took photos. Every single event that we were a part of on campus, we took photos. And we embedded them with the Domino's Pizza logo and my nephew's company, needgraphics.com. We put them up on our blog and we told students, right click, swipe, and steal these. But now you would think that as a brand, from there eventually all of our marketing would go through Facebook. Well, I'm going to tell you, what we do back in Chicago in our six-store franchise is we educate our customers. We educate our customers, and I love talking to students about how are you going to use the tools of social media? What's social media going to say about you when you want to become, when you want to get that internship or you land that first job? I am always out there saying, how can we help our students? I'm not worried about likes and things like that. I'm worried about them. I'm worried about my customers being successful. If my customers can be successful, then we can be successful because they stay in business. I was so honored last year that uh, one of the, uh, the, the fraternities, TKE, made me an honorary fraternity brother. So shout out to, we got a viewing party going on live in Chicago. So my brother's back at UIC. You got your shout. You, what you need to do is you need to trust your instincts. Because no matter how big your team or how solo your team, if you do not believe in yourself, it's impossible to lead. You need to be your own caffeine. What I mean by that is that we put so many obstacles in front of us. We give ourselves so many reasons why we can't do this. I can't lose weight because of this. I can't save money because of this. I can't get this job because of this. Look to yourself, look within yourself for inspiration and be your own inspiration and what I call being your own caffeine. Don't be lazy. It doesn't matter what you do, just don't be lazy. And the reason that you, you can't be lazy is that success will only hit a moving target. You can't be successful unless you can retire at birth. And there's very few people that can do that. The other thing I would tell you is don't be boring. Absolutely not. Because if you're operating a brand and you are boring, you better, you better increase your budget for advertising. Because to an extent, that advertising can be the cost of being boring. When you go to battle with social media and anything that you're doing, you need to partner. I had the chance yesterday to hear Ekaterina talk about her book. She's the author of Think Like Zuck, and she talked about five points. But the one point that really resonated with me was how entrepreneurs become successful because they partner with people. And that's what made me think of this. You need to go to battle with a wingman. Now, if you think that people don't take their cameras into bathrooms, you're mistaken. So I had the opportunity to speak, to speak to a brand, and I told them, if you became a little more creative with your toilet paper, and you put some little origami, trust me, they might take a photo of it. And you know that that company was Disney. So Disney, thank you very much. Now every time I go to Disney, they go origami overboard, but I love it. It's okay. Today is what we call Global Domino's Pizza Day. Last year, if you ordered through Facebook, you got 50% off, and worldwide through this application, we got 515 orders. So today, all the December the 6th, New Zealand, China, and all these countries have, have come aboard. It'll be interesting to see the metric, how we end up after this. My goal with everything we do is to keep the conversation alive. Easier said than done, but it's a lot of fun trying to do it. We want the people to get to know the face behind the logo. When we started with the tools of social media, we made sure that we defined it and that we were ready for what they call in Vienna, Austria, a shit storm. And when that happened, we had a plan. And that plan was to realize that social media fire can only be put out with social media water. And how does that happen? I'm gonna give you a cool example here. In 2009, we had a customer who tweeted, I just ordered pizza online. Such little room for human error. How could they possibly mess it up? By the time I got this tweet, she had already gotten called the store and had been taken care of. This is what I call my video apology. Three years ago, went down to the store, we got in front of a camera, and we said, Interactive Amy, I apologize for what happened. You know, my whole goal was just one view, anything over one was a win, and this has been blogged about all over the world, and we're thankful for it. Other things that are really cool is that that video got picked up by Siok Siok, 
who's out of Singapore, who's doing the, uh, the Twitter entry that has been shown all over the world. Here we are in PayPal. So even if, it, if PayPal, if you guys could hear me on the other side, I'd just shout it out, PayPal. The thing is here, it's not only been there, it's been at, at South by Southwest and so many other places around the world, and we're humbled by that. So much that out of New York City, when, when it was played at the 140 conference, Jeff Pulber tweeted, Ramon, if you want to come to New York, you're the first confirmed speaker for next year. So, Lewick, if you're paying attention and you absolutely like what I'm sharing, feel free to tweet that you want me back next year. But you need to tweet it. You need to tweet it, otherwise it didn't happen, because that's the Internet of Things. Let's do it. <laughs> so are you really ready? Look at this. Worst customer experience ever. This is why no one wants to do social media, because they say they're going to talk bad about the brand. Well, let me tell you, if you don't do bad things, they won't talk bad to you. Well, we messed up her, her football experience so bad in 2010. She said, Ramon, you made me miss a football game. I told her, don't worry, Lauren. Next pizza need, I got your back, and we sent her two tickets. Fortunately enough, the Bears won that game. One year later, one year later, I said, Lauren, in honor of what happened last year, let's cater a football party. And this is 2011. She said, yes, let's do it. See, I revisit customer concerns. Most brands want to solve the problem and put them under the rocks, not me. I want to dance everywhere I possibly can with my customers. So what do you think happened in 2012? There's the date, and she moved out of Chicago, she's living in Cincinnati, and as long as I can possibly do it, and she's willing to accept our services, I will hook her up in honor of how we screwed up her pizza three years ago. Brands don't do that. Now, how about this for brands? Gino, I hope you're listening. Create the first brand experience. So he's one of our students at UIC, he's interviewing me for, for a project in school about social media. I said, well, I'm going to give you the opportunity to live it. So I grab his iPhone, we take a photo, and I, he posts it on his Facebook page. And we drive to campus. And the, the message says, whoever wants this pizza, like this and give me an address. 90 seconds later. The world, you know what? History kind of repeated itself tonight when Ramon Wild hooked up with Gino. And we decided to uh, maybe shock and awe or just delight one of Gino's friends today. Mm -hmm. So what happened today, Lydia, when you saw that Facebook post? Well, I just figured I needed that pizza because it looks so good. So now, now, so visually, you know, you thought that you needed the pizza and it looked good. How was it once you bit into it? Oh, it was better than I expected. <laughs> now... Have you recently, when was the last time, or ever, have tried a Domino's pizza? Not recently. Well, you know what? That, that needs, needs to change. change. You, have a new you, you have a new friend in the pizza business. She's a <laughs> freshman student. Imagine an 18-year-old so student being One of the things like I think we should, we should schedule for some time next week at your, at your dorm, would you be interested in hosting a, a pizza party? Obviously catered, no charge. Uh, yeah, of course. Awesome. You know what, you've been, a, you've been a very good sport. Thank you very much for the opportunity to serve you this evening. And uh, how did we make you feel? How, how did we make you feel? Make me feel amazing. We made her feel amazing. See, with brands, we're too reactive. We're just waiting. We're waiting to catch stuff. If it rains, you know, get out there and create the first brand experience. See, the, the whole thing you got to realize with social media, it's, it's about people. It's not about technology. Social media doesn't change your business. It, may, it maybe holds us to, a, to an accountability at a different level. We have to realize that we have to give, give up the control and get used to it. Let our customers speak. Let them say what's on their mind. And Marcy, during a Twitter chat, I, I mean, if customers want to do this, let them, let them do it. Get on their blogs and just realize and be receptive to the information. Let your customers love you. Your organization is a media outlet, like it or not. You need to make sure that your message needs to be clear. Say what you want to say. Don't assume that people know what you mean. Don't get lost in the clutter. And overall, don't overdo it.
You know? So if there's something you're going to walk away with, you will never look at a stop sign or roll of toilet paper the same. Content is always being created. You need to make sure that with that content that's being created, there's always a level of excitement. The difference with me is I want to be found. I talk to people in real life. I get out there, let people get to know the face behind the logo so that when we have those situations, people know who is the ultimate person responsible for our operations. I love in these classrooms when there's more pizza than textbooks. I asked my friend, friend Ted Rubin, Ted Rubin, why do my customers do this? He said, Ramon, it's because you listen. You make the story about them. You ask them, how can I serve you? And you ultimately, you really know your people. You know what? If there has been a doubt, or there was a doubt, who and what is Ramon Wow? I'm the same guy, the same pizza guy that started in 1989. Whenever you get a kiss from Forbes' number two most influential woman, you want to talk about how influential this is as a tip? She's inspired other people to do absolutely the same. Do I love my job? Do I have fun what I'm doing? Absolutely. So anybody know Chris Brogan? Loic? Hey, it's up to you. So, <laughs> how's the web been for me? I've absolutely loved it. I'm going to close with this. In the U.S., Hostess has gone bankrupt. They make Twinkies and cupcakes, and I don't know how many people know about it. Well, let me tell you, that social media and creativity runs in our DNA. My nephew, Andres, that helped me kickstart at Northwestern all of our social media. For one of his clients, they went down to the warehouse and bought them out. And it, at his client's fast food restaurants, yesterday, they gave away 10,000 Twinkies. So with any food purchase, you got a Twinkie. It made the Chicago Sun-Times. It made NBC. AP picked it up, and he was on the USA Today, all powered through social media. I purposely left my second to last slide blank because if I have inspired you, I am saving this slide for you. And since Luik said I can come back next year, I am going to talk about you in that slide. Je m'appelle Ramon Wow. I have had a beyond the time blast sharing what I call the mind of Ramon, the passion of Ramon Wow. I am out of here. Yes. Ladies and SMC Chicago is in the house. <laughs> Robert, um, where do you get that energy? Maybe this is Dunkin' Donuts. Is, is that? <laughs> <laughs> well, what's this thing with you and toilet paper? Well, you have, you have toilet paper on every single slide. Well, you, you, know, you know what? You'd, you'd be surprised. Is it, is it when you go there, you start being inspired and... Could be. <laughs> you just got to be ready. <laughs> you got to see the pictures I took from the public toilet restrooms here in Paris. Oh, you, oh, you did that in Paris too? Yeah. And really? actually, one of the restaurants, it was funny, the, the women's restaurant, the F for, for Femme, was a, a Facebook F. So I'm like, I'll share that next year. So uh, give me uh, advice, like when, you know, when, when you're a little like, slow or down, like how do you get your energy level back? It, it looks like you, I've never seen you not like that. So, well, What it is, this is one of the biggest stages I've ever spoken on. The bigger the stage and the more enthusiastic the crowd, the more I can deliver. I don't know very little sleep. Are you enthusiastic? <laughs> See? I've had a blast. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Thank Luke. you, Ramon. Thank you very much. We'll have you next year. Amen to I, that. I tweeted. You can, do you read your tweets? I oh, I will. As soon as I get back out of here. <laughs> Thank you, Ramon. Big round of applause. <laughs>